Hello, everyone, and welcome to Aldebaran Resources Live Summit today, hosted by SIX. I'm very pleased to introduce our speakers today. We have CEO and Director John E. Black and Chief Geological Officer and Director Dr. Kevin B. Heather. Um, following the presentation, there will be a live Q&A session as per usual, so you can submit your questions at any time using the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll try to get to as many of them as possible. Um, and of course, this is being recorded and available to watch afterwards on SIX.com. But without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, John, to uh, kick it off. Okay, great. Thanks, Dasha. I'll just give a brief introduction here. I'd like to open by thanking Dasha and Romeo and Cameron and the entire SIX team uh, we find this a very good format for us to provide a little more information than we can typically provide in a, in a news release coming out. So we thought that today would be a good time to just provide an update for everybody on where we're at with the program. We've recently um, finished our drilling program for the year as the first heavy snows have arrived. And this would be a great moment for us to review what was accomplished this year, what the news flow will be over the next few months as we continue to release drill results from that campaign. And more importantly, what we wanted to do was to go into a little bit more depth on some very, very exciting drill or geophysical results that we announced last week. Uh, this is a little bit different than what we're typically announcing with drill holes on a program like this. this is a program that we invested quite a bit of time over the last two years to get. We have the results and they provide some, some really interesting new views of the project and better ways that we can see what the potential of the project is going forward. So we felt this format would allow Kevin to go into a little more detail and, and let people take a look at why we're so excited about this. So why don't I turn it over to Kevin and we'll let Kevin uh, walk us through what these results mean and more importantly, what it means for the next, next field season coming up. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, thanks for the introduction, John. Um, I'll just uh, share my screen. Uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening to wh wherever you are in the world watching us today. Okay, so I think everybody should be able to see my uh, screen okay now. Um, the typical disclaimer, we are a junior company on the TSX and uh, I will be making forward looking statements and especially since we're talking about geophysics, uh, there will be a lot of forward looking statements. Um, I think most of you know where we're located. We're located in San Juan, Argentina. Uh, right now things are booming. We're down in the southwest corner here, uh, just 25 kilometers from Anafagasta's Los Palambres mine in Chile, and just 25 kilometers north of El Pachon and Glencore's project, and about 55 kilometers south of uh, McEwen Copper's Los Azules. Um, and then about 500 kilometers north of us is the uh, Filo del Sol and the Jose Maria projects up here. So, what are the key takeaways for today? Uh, this is actually a photograph from uh, about uh, 10 days ago at our project in our camp. And you can see we got hit by heavy snowfall and very cold temperatures. And so we took the decision to uh, shut down the program for this uh, field season, as did some of the surrounding companies near us as well. And we are currently uh, digging out and recovering all the drill rigs and moving them off the mountain. This shutdown will be for a very short, brief period of only th probably three months, and we're really hoping, weather permitting, that we'll be able to start getting back in in September um, and start to kick off the new 2022-2023 drill campaign. In total, we were able to accomplish 14,400 uh, meters of drilling roughly, that was far short of our planned 20 to 25 meter, uh, 25,000 meter campaign we were hoping for. Um, we completed 13 full drill holes. Uh, three holes were lost and two holes we started, but were oh, basically one got to seven meters and the other one got to 64 meters before the large snowstorm hit and we had to evacuate everybody off the mountain. Um, we've had a lot of operator issues, um, and uh, so our production rates this year were, were somewhat uh, disappointing. But it's something that's been experienced by just about all the operators up there uh, this year. Um, in terms of our assay result status, we've, com we've reported four complete holes. We've got four holes where we have the assays now and they're under final internal QA, QC re review. 
and th some of those should be released next week. Um, and we have eight holes that are still pending part portions of the holes. Um, and we're waiting on those. The labs have, have greatly uh, increased their turnaround time. So we're hoping to get uh, the rest of the drill results out here uh, in a fairly short period of time. And like I mentioned, two holes were started, but uh, those will be probably uh, complete. Those holes will be re-entered and completed next field season. I think the most exciting part, which is the main topic for the uh, the uh, presentation today, is um, the results from the recently completed 3D induced polarization and magnetotelluric geophysical survey. We've identified multiple near surface in pit conductive anomalies that appear to be correlative with where we have mineralization in drill holes and where currently we have waste indicated in the resource block model. So those are clear kind of low hanging fruit that could be drilled early on next field season. And we also have a very large four kilometer by 3.5 kilometer and two kilometer deep conductive anomaly that appears to include and also connect both the Altar Central mineralized system and the Altar East mineralized system and everything in between the two. As well, that same anomaly extends quite a ways to the south, almost a kilometer to a kilometer and a half, and includes what we were previously discussed in an earlier webinar, the Altar Southeast multi-element geochemical anomaly from the Talus Vine survey that we completed uh, uh, a little while ago. Uh, I don't want to go into all the details here, but just uh, for your reference, and you'll have access to this uh, presentation, but these are a list of the drill holes, their azimuths, their dips, and their final depths. Um, we've already reported the holes shown in green. Uh, the next three holes should be out next week. These are the holes that are the uh, detailed step outs from the high grade gold uh, hit that we had in drill hole 45 that was reported some time ago. And then the remaining holes are in various uh, uh, states of completion, like I previously mentioned. Um, and as those become uh, complete holes and the assays have been QA, QC'd, we'll get those out as quickly as as possible. So I foresee in the next uh, month or so that we'll be uh, putting out on a more regular basis the, the results. And then finally, the, the two holes highlighted in red, uh, we will not report. Those holes did not go deep enough. They're, they didn't hit any mineralization at these uh, shallow depths. So we'll wait and complete those next year and report them as part of next year's campaign. This is just a quick map to show the distribution. The bulk of the drilling has been done out here at the radio QDM area as part of our resource definition program. And then three holes were drilled out here in the Altar uh, Central and Altar East area. These holes have not been reported yet. We're still pending uh, some assays from some of the, from the deeper portions of the holes. All of these holes were drilled quite deep. Um, and so, except for this is the hole that was uh, collared, but only got to seven meters before we had to shut down. So now switching to the geophysics, which I think is the really interesting part here, is we can see uh, a map, and I've highlighted in the yellow circles the areas of the known mineralization, QDM radio, Altar Central, Altar East, and then the Altar Southeast area where we have a nice geochemical and multi-element geochemical anomaly that we discussed in previous webinar. And you can see the area that we completed for the three-dimensional IP and MT survey. It's 10 kilometers by say six kilometers. It took us two field seasons to complete this. It's a large area. Um, and so we're gonna really focus on the Altar Central and Altar East area. Um, we previously discussed the results from the QDM radio in a uh, webinar back in November uh, 2021. I don't want to belabor this. I put this in just for your reference. Um, but induced polarization is a, uh, an active geophysical method. We're actually inducing electrical current into the ground. And we're measuring two properties, the chargeability 
and the resistivity. And the inverse of the resistivity is the conductivity. So if we have something that's high resistivity, it's low conductivity. And the reverse is if it's high conductivity, it's low resistivity. And this technique typically can look down to six, seven, maybe 800 meters depth. We also, in parallel, did magnetotellurics. This is a passive geophysical method. And this is basically measuring the electrical current passing through the Earth due to lightning strikes that are occurring 24 hours a day globally. And so we don't induce the, the electrical current. We're measuring the current that's being generated by lightning strikes. And this methodology, we're measuring resistivity and conductivity. So we've got two forms of measuring resistivity and conductivity. We've got the 3D induced polarization, and we've also got the MT. So we can see whether we get a correspondence between the two independent methods. The beauty of MT is it's a very deep looking uh, technique and we can typically see uh, down to one to three kilometers and in some cases even beyond that. So this is just a map again showing the uh, main areas and you can see this is a depth slice of the magnetotellurics resistivity and we can see the bright red areas are areas of very high conductivity. So the electricity is passing through these areas and this is a depth slice at 3000 meters and you can see it's very nicely mapping out the QDM radio area, the Altar Central area, and the Altar East area, and also the Altar Southeast area. You'll see there's a number of other anomalies. We have to be a little bit careful with these because they're either at the edge of the survey or they're on single lines. And so we need to be a bit careful. Um, and these probably require um, a little bit more uh, additional lines to really firm up. And you'll see that these other areas have multiple lines crossing them in different directions. So they're much higher confidence. Okay, this is a bit of a busy slide. This was in the press release. And what we can see here um, in the black line, you can see the outline of the conceptual 2021 pit for our resource for Altar Central and Altar East. So within that pit is the 1.4 billion tons roughly of 0.5 copper equivalent. And what I've superimposed on this is um, the results from the tailless fine geochemistry. And in this case, the gold, we could do this with other elements as well, copper and arsenic and bismuth and many others show the same kind of pattern. But we can see that the gold is very strongly highlighting the area of known mineralization. And you can see you know, all these little blue dots here and all these over here. Those are the drill hole traces from Altar East and Altar Central. And so you can see it's mapping out those quite nicely. And then you can see there's no drilling down here on the Altar Southeast anomaly. The other thing I've superimposed on here in the dashed white line is that resistivity anomaly that I just showed you previously at the 3000 meter elevation. And you can see that it's mapping out something very conductive covering this area as well. But to better see this, what I'm gonna show you now is an east-west cross section here, AA prime, and we'll be looking to the north. And then we'll look at another cross section where we actually have a drill hole that we drilled this year on CC prime. And then finally, we'll look at a north-south cross section quickly looking to the east. So we get an idea in three dimensions what this anomaly looks like and what its correlation to known mineralization is. So this is the section east-west. We're looking to the north. And what you can see is you can see the surface. In the blue line, you can see the pit outline. That's the conceptual pit outline. You can see all the drill hole traces. We're showing the copper equivalent grade here. And you can see the resistivity feature here from the magnetotellurics is really mapping out quite nicely the base of the oxidation or the leach cap and when we go into the top of mineralization. And you can see that that anomaly 
is large. It's roughly four kilometers across by two kilometers deep. And you'll see when we do the orthogonal cross section, it's roughly uh, three to three and a half kilometers in the other direction. And you can see everywhere where we penetrate that anomaly almost, there's mineralization in the drill holes. And so there's a large area uh, that has remains to be tested uh, with drill holes. And you can see, this is interesting because the current pit has this hump in the bottom, and that's basically because all of the previous drilling here in the middle between Altar Central and Altar East is very shallow drilling, and therefore there were no resource blocks. So I can show you that. So just to collaborate that this is a real anomaly, I mentioned that we also did the induced current uh, resistivity and IP survey, and I'm just going to superimpose that anomaly, and I'll bet you barely saw that there was a difference there. But if you look, this is the showing exactly the same geometry. So we have two independent geophysical methods showing us that this large conductive feature is indeed real. I'll also now just superimpose the uh, 2021 block model on here. And I think you can quickly see that the, the block model is almost where we have showing us, uh, obviously where we have drill holes, but is confined to that anomaly. And you can see there's large portions of the anomaly that have yet to be drilled. And you can see even some of these drill holes in the middle here, we're just starting to come into some grade, but we're stopped. And these are holes that were drilled uh, prior to us acquiring the, uh, the property. So again, a very, very interesting correlation between the geophysics, the known mineralization, and obviously our block model. Some of you will remember from previous webinars that I had an hypothesis that maybe we have another younger uh, buried intrusion that's coming in to the uh, Altar Central and Altar East area. And I'm just going to superimpose that on here. And you can see this is the exact model that I presented probably three, almost four years ago. And we started to think that we might have something buried down below here because this is now showing Molly and Molly typically forms a halo around the porphyry systems. And we can see that the, the Molly grades are picking up towards the bottoms of all of these holes. And when I superimpose it on here, it matches very nicely with this large conductive feature in the geophysics as well. So further collaboration of both geophysical data, but also geochemical and geological data from the known drilling. Now I'd like to show you an east-west cross section that's located about two to 300 meters north of the section I just showed you. We actually collared a hole here, 221. This was collared before we got the final geophysical results. And, um, and so, we didn't have the benefit of knowing that that big anomaly existed there, but we had a suspicion based on the geological uh, model that I just showed you that there could be something between. So we started drill hole 221 to make sure that we could get this hole finished before the end of this year's field campaign. So here you can see the section. Um, the There you can see the trace of where the hole was intended to go. You can see the pit outline again, and you can see that where we hit uh, the anomaly, we have grade. And we can see that there's still gaps um, and areas where there could be extensions to mineralization that are almost in pit. And then there's still this large feature at depth. And you can see at the bottoms of these deeper holes, the grade starting to pick up. So hole 221 is one to keep an eye on um, as we start to get the assay. It's one of the last holes we drilled, and so we're still pending assays on this, but uh, uh, that's going to be one to, uh, to watch, I think. This just shows the uh, DC IP, the in, uh, just to show that it also shows this large anomaly. 
And then if I flip the block model onto here, um, you can see that uh, there's very little um, uh, in terms of um, uh, blocks down in uh, below the pit here because just no drilling to uh, support uh, additional resources down there. So quite an exciting hole to uh, watch. Okay, now I'd like to just show you a north-south cross section here, BB prime, just to give you an idea what it looks like in the other direction and to see how it relates to the geochemical anomaly down here at Altar South East. So again, it's a little bit small, but uh, again, I reference you back to uh, some earlier uh, webinars that I've given to explain the geochemical halo above, above a porphyry. But typically we see very distinct element suite that are like a plume of, of uh, elements coming off the top of the, uh, the, the mineralizing porphyry system. And here we can see we get a copper anomaly, we get gold, Here's where uh, we started to call our hole 222. That's the hole that we got to seven meters and then got snowed out. So that'll be clearly one of the first holes that we go back into next uh, field season and complete that hole to test the, uh, the anomaly here. We also see that it's associated with indium and bismuth, some of the typical trace elements. And you can see how those same elements are also very nicely highlighting the altar uh, central and Altar East area. So this looks very promising uh, to the south here. This is the cross section I talked about. And you can see the red bar here shows where that geochemical anomaly for Altar Southeast is. It's a multi-element. You can see where hole 222 was collared. The idea was to come down through here. You can see we've got a conductor here that's actually sitting within the pit shell, and you can see that if we go along, along laterally from that conductor, it goes into where we got very nice mineralization in some of these drill holes here. And then you can see some of these holes are, are too short. They never got into the conductor. And we've got another conductor. And for all of these deeper holes, bottom mineralization and uh, never really started to test this deeper uh, target. And again, reminder of the scale is like two to three kilometers across here. So very, very big. Here. And I'll just show you again. It's cover by the east side. Uh, a map as well. And also, if we look at the block model, you can see countless areas are currently being uh, considered as waste or not filled in or go in through resource. These are clear areas that are kind of laying through that will uh, convert waste to ore and help uh, in, uh, better the, uh, the, the strip ratio of deposit. And then clearly you can see down here um, lots of room to grow potentially this resource as well. So what are the next steps? This is what I, uh, the next steps I presented back in March of uh, this year. And I just want to show you that we have made progress towards what we were trying to accomplish. We fell short of our drilling due just because of um, some uh, operator issues, um, but uh, additional drilling may uh, be required uh, in order to do the reefs update at the radio porphyry, we'll evaluate that here in the next couple months and decide whether we can meet the uh, Q4 this year uh, resource up timing or whether we complete some additional drilling in order to do it. But we, at any rate, we would start that early uh, in the field campaign in uh, October, November of this year and hopefully have an updated uh, resource by Q1 2023 at the latest. Um, we've reported, uh, we'll, we'll, we will be reporting here next week, initial short step out holes on the uh, QDM high grade gold uh, intercept that we had. Um, the 3D IP and MT is complete. I walked you through some of the existing results. Uh, completed now the tail tire product. We're about that date and now some of it, we're just getting the last bits of that in now for the far field areas. And um, I 
I think I've hopefully demonstrated that uh, we've already defined some very compelling near surface in pit targets and also some deeper large targets that appear to be co uh, co correlate with areas of known mineralization based on drilling. And then we're looking at some areas that are a little bit more far field, but th that uh, targeting work is still undergoing. And we also completed uh, five water monitoring wells as part of our water balance uh, studies moving forward. So the preliminary plan, and this is we're getting to the end here, um, is to be open up in the can in early September when weather conditions permitting. Um, we hope to mobilize four to six drill rigs to the starting in October 2022. This will clearly depend on rig availability and also uh, financing conditions, market conditions, because obviously the markets right now are, are a little bit skittish. The resource drilling at radio porphyry if additional drilling is deemed necessary. But as I mentioned previously, this will be evaluated after we receive all the final assay data and we'll make a decision whether we think we can go forward with a resource update at the end of this year as originally planned or whether we think we need a few additional holes uh, to, to better fill in uh, for that resource update. Um, like I mentioned, we'll start and complete the uh, two holes that were ended prematurely because of snow. We'll start those uh, first thing next season. And then obviously uh, we're working right now on preparing uh, follow-up drilling on some of these new geophysical and geochemical targets that I've just walked you through. Um, if, if what we think this geophysics is telling us is true, uh, there'll be a lot of drilling that needs to be done over the coming uh, field campaign and uh, onward in the future. So this, this could potentially be a, a very large system that's what we've believed right from the beginning. And uh, now I'll uh, stop sharing and uh, open open things up for questions. Great. Thank you so much um, for the presentation. We have a bunch of questions here, but if you have any other questions, feel free to submit them now. Um, I have a question about the, the, the supply of drill rigs for next season. What are you doing to secure um, the rigs and will there be a better supply next drilling season? I, I can jump in and answer that. It, uh, we are anticipating that the drilling companies will be in a better position to provide more rigs and, and probably more importantly, uh, better trained crews. Part of the trouble this year was not just the rigs, it was whether we had experienced drillers. So ourselves and I know our peers up at Philo experienced the same thing with a lot of dropped holes and a lot of just driller errors due to inexperienced drillers. So we, we hope that they improve and step up their game. They've got a few months now to kind of get their act together on this. And uh, much of what we were doing at PDAC last week was meeting with various drilling companies, including companies that are new companies that are anticipating bringing uh, rigs in and establishing establishing uh, teams in country to, to address the boom that we're seeing in San Juan right now. Got it. Great. Thank you. Um, and did the 3D geophysical survey identify, identify any other targets that have not been drilled? Um, and did it help targeting at the QDM radio? Kevin, you want to do that one? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, um, we already, it did help at the QDM radio. That was the focus of the webinar that we gave back in uh, November of 2021. It, those of who have been following us will remember that this geophysical survey was actually started in early 2021. And we, um, and we got only about half of the area covered and were again uh, shut out because of uh, heavy snowfall. And so we had to go back in earlier this field campaign to complete that survey and that we're just now getting the final results. So we focused on the Altar East and Altar Central area because that data was not available to us prior to today. Uh, and and so I, I advise people if they want to go back and look at the QDM radio area, it's in a, the November 2021 webinar. Great. Thank you. Um, and all those uh, recordings are up on six.com to watch. Um, when will you know what the drilling program for next field season will look like in terms of like total meters and all of that? 
Probably about August of this year would be my my best estimate on that. We've got to we've got to receive all the assays we have right now. Take a look at that. Um, Kevin and the team are already tearing apart the geophysics to to begin to lay that out. And as part of our agreement with Sabanya Stillwater, we present a plan to them at the end of August for their commentary and and observations on that. And we would like to be mobilizing into the camp in September. So I would say we'll see the drill results coming out over the next two months. And, and by August, we'll be in a position to be laying out what the program will look like next year. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Peter has a question for you, Kevin. Um, he's asking, do you have the data on the split of copper between phases found in drilling rather than copper EQ data? Um, for example, extractable copper. Yeah, there's, yeah, there is, he's talking about, uh, I guess, uh, copper that can be extracted by acid, acid leaching, I guess. Um, yeah, with the, the tops of the holes have been, um, historically, there is some data. So we do have that information. And if you go and you look, we've, we've outlined all of that distribution of the secondary enrichment blanket in previous, uh, webinars as well um and so yeah we do have some of that data but it's uh it's on a it's inconsistent data it was not historically done on every hole mm, okay. but we do it on our holes at least when up until we get uh through the uh super gene enrichment thank you um and what grades do you need in new areas to be tested at altar central Artel east and um altar south um, that, that's a that's a good question, and and one of the things that why we're so excited about this this new data on this is that as we've we've indicated a lot of our work this year was looking for higher grade zones at East or excuse me at QDM Radio and previously some of the deep roots between East and Central when we thought those were were just two separate systems. Now with the emergence of this data, we're seeing anomalies that are right in the pit. And for those to be of importance to us, they just need to be above cutoff because it'd be converting waste to, to pay ore or pay rock anyway. So anything above 0.2 is economically significant. And anything that's similar to our average grade of about 0.5 copper equivalent uh, is, is good on there. So we, we don't need as high a grade when we're drilling anomalies within the pit as we do when we're drilling the deeper targets that might require bulk underground mining. Thank you. Um, Mark has a question about a specific hole. He says hole 221 is 1,487 meters and complete. Um, were you seeing typical porphyry mineralization along the length of the hole once in mineralization um, while logging the hole? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it. We don't like to describe and detail the holes until we have the assays to put out. It's always a little dangerous, but. I think it's fair to say that we wouldn't be highlighting a hole like that if it doesn't support our story here. Great, thank you. Um, Mario is asking beyond beyond the uh, geological resources, and um, how are the geotechnical and metallurgy works going? Do you have um, in these drilling campaigns plan to advance on these issues? We are moving forward. Kevin mentioned in his presentation that we completed five water wells this year, and that's work that's done both to establish what the water budget and the water characteristics are on the project. So it's, it's feasibility level work that we're, we're doing to prepare for eventual preparation of PEA or pre-feasibility studies on the project. Um, it also helps us on understanding glacier features and just overall water budget in the, in the project area. So we're moving forward with that. We do benefit from a lot of metallurgical data that was collected by the predecessor companies that operated on the project. And so we're compiling all of that work and taking a look at, at that. Until we fully know all the areas of mineralization, we, we probably won't be in a position to definitively state what, what recoveries are and what best, best ways are. But I think it's fair to say right now that it's a, it's a very standard porphyry with portions of it that have super gene enrichment. So it, it opens up the possibility of producing a concentrate uh, which would be fairly routine and normal concentrate or, or potentially um, applying SXCW leach methods to some of the areas that have super gene enrichment. Yeah, and in terms of the geotechnical stuff, um, we've since uh, the, starting at the beginning of this field campaign, we, uh, we've uh, in, it installed a, a much more rigorous and detailed uh, geotechnical logging uh, program. We've been doing that through uh, 
uh, using consultants out of uh, Tucson, Colin Nicholas, who are world experts in geotech. And uh, so we now have a system in place with our geos uh, that are collecting uh, much more uh, rigorous and, and detailed geotechnical information prior to the core being manipulated and sampled. Another thing that kind of fits into this, a project like this with this scale and with the scarcity of large copper projects like this, where we interact with a number of major mining companies and they all provide ideas of things we should be doing, things they'd like to see us do to, to advance the project to that level. So that, that helps us uh, make sure that we're providing the type of data that they would need to be interested in the project in the future. Thank you so much. Um, so when will the next drill results be released? Uh, we, we've got the, the results for those, those offset holes around the gold numbers. Those are all in right now. And uh, got a little bit of work to, to write those up, but that should be next week-ish on, on that coming out. And then the, the following results would, depends a little bit how we batch those together and how they come up. But I would say um, by the end of July, we'll see uh, another significant batch of the majority of the holes coming out and then perhaps another release a little bit later than that. All right, thank you. Um, question from Cole. Will drilling the deep geophysical anomaly be the most cost-effective way to grow the project? Um, next question is expand the pit and cover more material within the pit to inferred or greater. Uh, Kevin, you want us to take a stab at that or? Yeah, what was the, what was the question again? Um, will drilling the deep geo, uh, geophysical anomaly be the most cost-effective way to grow the project? And then he asks, um, expand the pit and cover more material within the pit to inferred or greater? Well, most of the resource right now is indicated and measured. We have very little in the inferred category. So of the 1.4 billion tons we have now, I'd say probably, I'm just ta off the top of my head here, probably 85% of it is in the indicated and measured categories. So two things that we would wanna do is drill some of those near surface anomaly areas because those are in the pit. And as I mentioned in the talk, we can convert waste to ore. And so those are, those are no brainer places to, to drill. Um, and by virtue of drilling those areas, uh, you've already drilled down through those, so you might as well keep going and drill the, the deeper target as well. We don't need to drill off all of that area below potentially to, to uh, an indicated or measured category. It just needs to, we need to show that that anomaly is real. And once we get uh, quite a few drill holes into it and can demonstrate that it's, those are mineralized, then I think we'll start to, uh, you know, get, uh, interest from from people about you know this thing could be very large and etc we need to see what the grades are going to be etc but we need to drill that those that, that anomaly and it's so such a big anomaly that it's going to require multiple holes widely spaced to properly to test it and then go on from there based on results all right well Thank you so much uh, to both John and Kevin for taking us through the presentation and the live Q&A. I also wanna thank everyone who joined us today and submitted questions. If you think of any follow-up questions following the summit, feel free to reach out directly to the Algoran Resources team. Um, their information uh, can be found on their website, aldebrandresources.com. Um, but I'll pass it back to you, John, if you have any final remarks before we close out. No, thanks, Dasha, and thanks, Kevin, for, for providing this information for us. And as Dasha mentioned, if, you, if we didn't get to your questions today or you think of other questions, please, please approach us. Um, we're, we're more than happy to talk about the project within the limits of what we can say and when we can say it. Um, this, this geophysical information that was presented in the press release last week and today is really, and described today, has really kind of opened up what the next field season will look like on this. We, we've got a lot more work to do on this and it, I like it because this points not only to the possibility of more mineralization, but it points to mineralization in areas that improves the mineralization we already know about. So it's 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 a, a pretty significant step change in the project as we move forward. So look forward to getting results out over the next few few weeks and months, and and particularly start to start talking about the plans for next field season. So thanks everybody for your time, and please feel free to reach out to us.